Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello and welcome back to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast. This is Blaze and I am recording right now the final episode of this podcast for a while. I'm not sure if this is the end end, but it is definitely going to be a break. And I wanted to talk this week about how we recognize when a project has come to its end or when we've found completion with a process, with a relationship, with whatever and the feelings that come with it, and how we can make that determination when we don't have someone guiding that decision for us. So if you're not being told by your boss that you have to do something, when do you decide that it's done? If no one told you, hey, you need to make blah, 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 and you start a painting or whatever project it is that you start, how do you determine that it's over and you're ready to move on to the next thing? And I've been thinking about that a lot as I've been making the decision whether or not to continue recording episodes. So let's talk about it. For me, this podcast was born out of an inspiration and a desire to connect with more people, to talk about emotions and feelings and situations candidly, and to offer some tools and techniques and perspectives that might help you cope if you're having a rough time with your feelings, to recognize that we have options and there's different ways to approach stuff, and also to recognize that everybody goes through a lot of the same things, but we don't always talk about it. And I've now had three full years of exploring these topics and giving what wisdom I have to offer and different perspectives. And I've realized as I've approached the end of this year, It's not so much that I'm running out of things to talk about, but it feels a little bit like that. It's that the themes have been very similar and it started to become more difficult (laughs) for me to come up with how to approach it in a different way because I am only one person, right? I have my own perspective and it does change, but it hasn't changed so much in three years that I have a completely different take on everything. So I feel that when I looked back and reviewed all of the topics and things that we've covered, it actually made me feel really good. And I wanted to mention that to you guys too, that you can look at your projects and it's good to look back on them and acknowledge what you've made or what made you feel good about doing something. And sometimes that also helps you to decide when it's time to move on to something new and that you feel complete about it. So looking back, I went, holy cow, I can't believe I've recorded this many hours of podcast for all of you. And I did it, you know, on my own. I am the sole producer of this podcast. (laughs) I create it. I come up with the ideas, record it, edit it, post it everywhere. For a while I was advertising it. I'm not really anymore. And I share it with my clients and it's, you know, you're a one man show, right? When you do something like that and it takes a lot of work and I did it for fun. I did it because I thought it mattered and I think it still does. And I'm going to keep it out there and circulating in live for as long as it feels right to do so. So I'm really, really grateful that I've had this experience. I've learned a lot. And that's another thing too, is recognizing how much I've gained from this experience. Um, it's, it's interesting, right? That when we create something, you never really know what the outcome is going to be or what you really wanted to get out of it. If that's what you get, or you get something else. Sometimes you can look back and go, oh, I thought I was going to gain like this huge following and it would be amazing. And I don't think I ever really expected that, but I, I did expect to stretch myself a bit and have to 
get over public speaking fears. So that actually was a huge help for me to have this outlet to go, I'm going to speak and people are going to hear it. It's going to be recorded for all time. And there it is. It's out on the internet now. So it lives here forever and everyone can listen to it. And there it is. And it's my thoughts. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm sharing my thoughts as though they're that important. So it was a good outlet for that. And it's been a nice catharsis, I think, sometimes to think through my own process on how I think and how I handle feelings and also how I'm helping people or how I help myself. And I like sharing stuff like that. I always want to, if I have an experience, be able to give it to someone else and go, hey, if this helps you, go ahead and take it. And if it doesn't help you, then leave it. But it's felt like um, a kind of friendship to have this outlet, this place to talk and share thoughts and feelings and to feel that there is a group and a community of people out there that sympathize or empathize with things that I'm going through, people who can benefit from having someone else going through the same process at the same time and who might just need that boost or reminder like, hey, you know what? We can think kindly towards ourselves. Maybe we can take the moment and do something nicer. And I've needed that too. So it's been nice to have this reminder every week, right? That I'm going to record something and it's going to be me reminding myself and reminding all of you to pause and slow down and take care of ourselves and that that's important and that it's good. And it's allowed me to live my own advice in a way that's a little bit deeper and more consistent. And I think that's actually important too. It's been more consistent than I had in the past. It's made me think about what do I have to offer and how can I show up and give more of that? And actually that's still really high on my mind. So as I'm moving into my future projects, I'm really recognizing and acknowledging that thinking about other people and thinking about how can I offer something that might be beneficial to other people and communicate it in a way that they find easy to consume and easy to understand and easy to interact with me, how can I create that and create more of it? And that's really at the forefront of my mind as I move forward with my coaching business and working with my clients, how can I create little snippets and bites for them to help their progress in whatever they're working towards. So exciting. I'm really enjoying that. Something else about recognizing when the end of a project comes is when you recognize that if you keep going, that the quality could diminish. And that's been a concern for me that over this many episodes, this many years, I don't want to keep creating content that's just the same thing over and over and over again. I want to really show up and give you something special. And if I don't think I can deliver that, then I'd rather go out on an upswing. So that's also part of this choice. And looking forward into the new year, I'm wondering what you all are working on. And I'm wondering what you're ready to call complete and move on from and what things are truly inspiring you and calling you to dive in and do them in the future. So it's kind of neat as you step away from a project that you're complete with or that you're ready to wrap up, suddenly so much opens up for you because there's the time and the energy that went into creating whatever that was that now is open. And it allows you to be able to see new opportunities. It gives you the time to be able to invest and the energy to invest into another project. So I think that's the benefit, right? Like it's not all sadness. There is some sadness though. So I'll share those feels too. There is the feeling of loss to, to knowing what my plan was and what I was doing and what comes next. There's always a little bit of "Ah," at the end of any project going, is it really over? Should I keep going? The self doubt. But ultimately I think we know in our hearts when we're ready to try something new and when we're ready to move on to a new horizon. So some of that you can acknowledge with like a feeling of excitement about something else. When you imagine your future continuing to do something and then imagine giving it up, what's the emotional response that you get and how do you feel in your body if you followed either of those paths and you kind of can test them out and get a feeling for it? there's easy ways, right? And then you can also ask others and go, Hey, I've been doing this for a while. 
and I'm feeling like I don't want to burn out. That was one of the things too. I think um, anyone who does a podcast or who does any kind of um, continuous creation of a project, we all run the risk of burning out on it and not enjoying doing it anymore. And I think because I went through that in my tattoo career, I would never want to have that happen with what I'm doing now. So now I'm really keyed in to the signs and symptoms that lead to burnout and acknowledging them before it becomes a problem and making a decision before it becomes a crisis. And this podcast has been a joy and something that I've really enjoyed doing this entire time. And I feel like ending it now feels good. And it also allows me to be excited to come back should the inspiration arise rather than feeling so tired. And like I've said, everything that I ever could say that I wouldn't want to come back. And it's important to me to leave that possibility open to say, okay, this podcast, three years, it's been a really amazing run. I'm super happy. I'm super proud. And I'm grateful for the people that I've met through this process. I'm grateful for all of you. To those of you who have, you know, written emails or spoken to me privately about things that came up for you or that had ideas to explore, to you, I am all so incredibly grateful. And I hope that you continue to be able to look back and find inspiration and joy from this podcast. And it's because of those experiences that I know at some point I'm going to have a new idea and be ready to explore something else. And a podcast may be the thing. And maybe it'll be the same one and it'll be a new season or maybe it'll be a completely new topic. But I will, of course, invite you all over to check it out. (sighs) That being said, it is time to close out the year. It's time for new beginnings. And my wish for all of you is that you have found something precious about yourself, that you've found something joyful to look forward to, that as you move forward into the new year, you're able to look back and remember, oh yeah, I'm amazing. I worked so hard. I did so many things. And there's so much greatness available and open to me as I move forward. And I'm going to grasp that and move forward, expecting things to go really well. I'm wishing you all incredible lives and an incredible experience moving into 2024. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey. And I look forward to meeting you however we do in the future. Thanks so much. And I'll see you outside of the podcast. Goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.